Hey, what's up, guys? We're back for part two of our LED watch build. I put everything back in the bag yesterday to try and keep it as neat as I could. And also, mostly, so I didn't lose everything. So if you missed yesterday, there's a link to it down below. But basically, we are building this LED watch. And yesterday, we got these tiny little resistors soldered in, three ceramic capacitors, the crystal, uh, the real-time clock, and the switches, leaving us today with just the STC microcontroller and the, uh, the LEDs themselves. Somebody asked a question yesterday, they said about the leg straightener for the pins, and could I do a video on it? Well, I probably can't do a video on it, there's not that much. Um, it's, how well you can see, it's basically like two pieces of wood. Okay, and there's a little hinge here for this piece. And there's, there's screws inside and springs, so it's, it's spring-loaded. And all you do is you take your IC and you put it upside down in between. You put the little spacer there and you squeeze. And it makes your pins ready to go. And then up here on the edge, you see it has this little three thing. That's for you know, straightening out individual legs if they get bent out of shape. As often happens in shipping. Um, again, this was made for me by a friend in Canada. I don't know where you can get one, but they don't seem to be that hard to make. All right, so next up we have the LED and the IC. Okay. Battery buckle. What I'm looking for now is some sort of indication on which way to put in the uh, the clock. I'm thinking and I'm hoping that it goes this way. Kind of like that. At least that's what I'm guessing anyway. Somebody also mentioned in the comments yesterday that I should use a little bit of blue tack to hold things in place. Yeah, I use blue tack all the time. I just didn't use any yesterday. Because sometimes I like to show people that even if you don't have everything that we're using in the video, you know, you can still do the projects. They can be done. All right, let's uh, zoom in here and we'll get to soldering our last two parts in. Okay. So there's one pin in, and I just want to make, have a look. Make sure everything is sitting flat as I want it, and it is, so then I will come back and solder in the other pin. Now, I can remove the blue tack, and it's steady, it's not going anywhere. So now I can just come in and solder it. So Blake, uh, Blake called me this morning. He's very excited. He begins his uh, summer job on Monday. He'll be working at a uh, tractor sales and service center for the summer. And making pretty good money at it, too. $14.50 an hour. 
And if he goes over 40, of course, he's getting time and a half. So good for him. Considering for the last two summers, he worked at the Toronto Municipal Swimming Pool. And I think he made $8 an hour. But, uh, yeah, he wants to get a little experience working with his hands before he goes off to the Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics this fall. So, I am happy for him and I applaud his efforts. I think a little experience working with engines and whatnot no matter what kind of engine he's working on, can only benefit him. So yeah, he is not going back to the University of Pittsburgh. He wants to work more with his hands than he thought he did once he got there, and you know, that's okay. Um, yeah, everybody needs to figure out what they want to do, and do it right so all right let's put these guys in here or this guy rather none of these it's just the one one second please all right a little bit of finesse and it's all in there there you can get an idea of the microprocessor Alright, so once again, we're going to take our blue tack and just kind of squish it there to hold things in place. And then we solder. So I'm looking at it end on to make sure it's sitting flat. It appears to be so then I weld, yeah, it's weld, <laughs> solder, the other corner. Now, when you've got a lot of pins like this, one of the things I like to do is take a little bit of flux here. Of course, this would have been better to do before you put the IC in, but that'll work just fine. What we can do is kind of a bit of a, almost a drag technique here, where we hardly even lift the iron from the board. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, let's do the other side. The flux, the extra flux that I put on there, simply helps the solder flow. And the resist itself, the colors you see there, the yellowish, greenish color, prevents the solder from sticking to it. Solder is kind of picky about where it sticks and where it doesn't. All right, if I did that correctly, uh, one last thing we got to do is put in. Ye old battery containment device here. Like so. And a little bit of solder to the tip for thermal conductivity. Then I'm going to lay this down here so I get the most contact, surface contact, and 
and just apply my solder. Since this is somewhat of a bigger joint, it's going to take a little bit longer, a second or so longer than a smaller joint. So, yeah, just be aware of that. All right, that's looking pretty good. I guess we can start putting the strap together in the case. If you could call it a case, I guess. But not really a case, but you know, whatever. some solid velcro okay so that is supposed to go like that really darn a slip fit yeah they are they're just I have to look at this picture again here. So number two. Yeah, number two goes like this. And this fits in there, like so. Then we add these on top. Well, <laughs> okay, all right, there we go, there we go, but there's no way to get to the battery without taking the whole thing apart, so, let's put in the battery. Put it in upside down. Don't think I did, but maybe I did. But you never know. Well, now, now what's wrong with this thing? Check the battery. But I'm pretty sure the battery is good. Unscrew my dinkles off of here. I keep them on here all the time so I don't lose them. Okay, so our battery is 2.7, it's a little bit low. Well, let's try putting three volts in from a power supply. Three volts. Now I'm going to limit the current to 200 milliamps. We'll see what that does. 
how we think this went. Make sure I'm not shorting anything out here and power it up. It's drawing a that's drawing two hundred Oh, yeah, it's right straight out. Let's try it. I don't think it goes this way, but what the hell? Nothing. Hmm. Does it need more power? I'll take the current limit up. to 300 milliamps. Yeah, just instantly. Huh. Let me try something else. All right, here's a rechargeable lithium cell. Let's see what we get here. Wow, that one's coming up dead. Huh. Well, guys, I don't know what to do. to go from here I mean yeah I could troubleshoot it but I don't want to put six hours into troubleshooting this thing not really God, I hate this when I have to leave you guys with not a good outcome but hey it's the way of the world things don't always work all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching, I guess. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to Uncle Rob for sending this out. Big thanks to the patrons for keeping us going. And a big thanks to you for watching this. That's it. I'm out. Peace.